Hey, I'm J.D. Payne. This week in mission history, John Livingston Nevius passes away. He was a Presbyterian missionary, served in China, but his Nevius plan really caught on in Korea and continues to influence us to this day as well. Stay tuned. Okay, so who was John Nevius? Well, Nevius lived between 1829 and 1893. He served in China, Presbyterian, and he spoke out against what was called the Old China Method. The first aspect of the Old China Method was that he saw missionaries controlling the churches that were planted and also controlling the financial resources that were coming out of those churches. Second, Nevius was not in favor of missionary compounds. The, the whole old mission station approach whereby missionaries would come together, would reside together, oftentimes within a fortress, walled off away from the people outside, was something that, that Nevius was not in favor of. The third thing that, that Nevius uh, had opposition toward in China during his day was the heavy use of financial subsidies. So these, these financial subsidies that would come from, from foreign countries being brought in by the missionaries to be used by the people he was not in favor of. Fourth, the establishment of expensive institutions that were neither desired by the people nor were able to be supported by the people, he pushed back against those as well. And finally, his view of seeing believers or new converts being extracted from away from their family and from their friends into a Christian subculture whereby they were not empowered and released to go back and really be a witness for the gospel. Nevius saw that as a detriment to the dissemination of the good news across the people throughout China. So Nevius expressed his views in his small little book called Planting and Development of Missionary Churches. Uh, in this book, the Nevius Plan, as it was called and is called to this date, actually contained five ideas, five concepts that were very uh, uh, different than what was taking place in his time in history, and they continue to influence missions today. Uh, the concept of indigenous churches had, had already been around. Rufus Anderson and Henry Venn had popularized the three-self concept of churches being self-supporting, self-governing, and self-propagating. But when Anderson, excuse me, when Nevius comes along and comes up with this concept of his plan, he basically talks about these five things. Number one, Christians should remain in their neighborhoods, remain in their jobs, and be a witness to the people that they know. Uh, instead of extracting them out of their context and bringing them into this Christian subculture, Nevius advocated reaching people where they were and leaving them where they were. Number two, the second aspect of the Nevius plan was basically that missionaries should only develop programs that the national churches actually wanted and that they could also support. And so this notion of being paternalistic was something that Nevius was pushing back against. He was basically saying that we should not be bringing things to these new believers and to these new churches from a foreign body afar when they cannot support it nor desire it. Number three, his plan basically talked about the notion that the national churches themselves, the churches that were in the context, they should be the ones that not only call their own pastors, but they should also be the ones that financially support their pastoral leadership as well. Number four, the fourth aspect of the Nevius plan involved the concept that any sort of church buildings, churches pieces of property that were being constructed should actually be constructed in the native expressions of architecture and those properties should be financially supported by the church members themselves. Finally, the Anevius plan involved intensive doctrinal and biblical training for the church leaders. This was something that should take place every year to be a part of the process of their development as leaders, their development as followers of Christ, so that they could take these teachings and pass them on to others as well. So unfortunately, the Nevius plan never really catches on in China during his day and time, but in Korea, it was a different story. Horace Underwood, who was a Presbyterian, and H.G. Appenzeller, who was Methodist, were both missionaries serving in Korea in 1890. They realized that there was something significant about this Nevius plan, and they invited him to come and speak to them and others about what he was thinking about when it came to the concept of missions. They began to implement his five principles and saw significant 
extensive growth and dissemination of the gospel throughout the Korean country. So hey, thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope that it's been helpful to you. Don't forget to strike like and don't hide. Subscribe and show you care. Share. Until next time, bye.